throne. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Our special message for tonight is the spiritual journey. We're all on a spiritual journey. And we can all learn from each other's journey. And because I believe that some of those who paid the price for us to be here that are watching as the great cloud of witnesses, the saints in heaven, I'm going to dedicate this night and this message on to my father, Joe McCaughey. My biological father and I were separated for 37 years. And he was Irish on both sides. After the Korean War, he was disabled in an airplane crash that he should have died in. And uh, he lived. So he left Rhode Island and he went down to Palm Beach to fulfill a dream. And his dream was to own his own fishing boat. So he went down to Palm Beach and started working as a hand on a fishing boat. Eventually became a captain and eventually ended up owning his own 85-foot fishing boat, charter fishing boat, and he named it the Shamrock. So he was about as Irish as they come. But he got a call on the phone on St. Patrick's Day. And the call went like this. Hello, is this Joseph Ambrose McCaughey? He said, yes, it is. I said, is this Joseph Ambrose McCaughey that lives on 101 Doolin Court Road in West Palm Beach? And he said, Yes, it is. What are you trying to sell me? I said, sir, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Well, then what is it? What do you want? And that kind of messed up my little speech that I had prayed about. Because can you can imagine at 37 years old calling your biological father that thought he had lost a son that he's got one. I think they should have like a good speech for that. And all I said was, my name is Curtis Edmund Landry, which he didn't know that name because when I was born, I was born Joseph Ambrose McCaughey III. He was the second. I said I was born on May the 11th, 1955 at Our Lady of Loretto's Hospital, and the reason I'm calling, I want to know if you're my dad. So we went right from, to the non-sales pitch. He said with his New England accent, what year, what month? He said, young man, I think we have something to talk about. And we talked for two hours on the phone. And I told him about my experience with God and how it was God that arranged for me to find him. And he told me that he got a mayday one day on that boat, the Shamrock. And a small shrimping boat was in trouble. And hurricane was coming. And they were Maydane, and there was no Coast Guard in the area. 
And he told God, he said, I'll go in there and rescue these guys, but you have to keep me and my crew alive. And if I do this, I want you to find my son. So they went in. The shrimp boat was lost. The captain and his crew was saved. And he told me that it was an answer to his prayer that I called him on that phone. Two weeks later, I had business down in Florida with my account, Public Supermarket. We met for the first time. And that night, I had the privilege of leading him to the Lord. So I dedicate this night to him. And I believe he can hear this, so I know he'll be proud of this message. I was blessed to have a father that believed in me and my call. Tonight, I want to talk to you about preparation for Passover. I want to say this to you. And you know it, but the scripture says that the steps of a good and righteous man and woman are ordered of God. Israel had wandered in the desert for 40 years. The United States has wandered in a desert for 40 years based off the word Bob Jones spoke. For the sons of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation, that is the men of war, would you say men of war? war. The men of war who came out of Egypt had perished because they did not listen to God's voice. And this is why the Lord gave me the word at Rosh Hashanah that it was time that we beat our swords into plowshares because he said, I'm, he said, I'm not looking for warriors, I'm looking for harvester warriors. And the reason is the Lord swore to them. The Lord spoke a word to them and he said that they would not let them see the land which the Lord had sworn to them or even their fathers to give them their land if they did not listen. It is key and it is not legalism. It is key to understand that we need to obey the Lord. I use it as an example when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I'm going to find your biological father. I was not raised in an adoptive family with a lot of emotional lack. I had very good adoptive parents. I wasn't one of these adopted kids that always said, I wonder uh, if I could find my parents. That wasn't the case with me. So when it happened, it was very spiritual. But when I think of the dynamics of my father being saved and his wife being saved and many other family members... Would they have been in hell right now if I didn't pick up the phone? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, and no one will ever know. But sometimes being obedient to the Lord, because my word to the Lord was, I'm not sure I want to open this can of worms. I, I didn't speak it out, but I thought it in my head. And like, well, what if it's like Charles Manson or somebody? You know, I was from Los Angeles and, you know, being Jewish, they got a lot of drama. Of course it's Charles Manson, you know. And, you know, so you get all these crazy thoughts. And the Holy Spirit spoke back to me through the Lord and he said, when I open a can, I take care of all the worms. (laughs) Now, I can tell you this was many years ago. I'm 61. That was 37. And he has taken care of all the worms. And the wonderful thing about God is I can look at Arabella and I can watch her walk across the living room at my house and see my dad and me with that special walk that we have, (laughs) that waddle, because I know where I got it. Because when I looked through the window of the pancakes house when I met him, I saw him getting out of his Mercedes and when he did, I saw him coming forward and I said, my gosh. Look at that walk, how weird that, oh my gosh, that's me. (laughs) 
See, a lot of times, things happen in your life and you don't know why. And I can tell you why now, and you don't have to believe it, but I believe it. God told me I needed the DNA of Joe McCaughey, and I needed the DNA of my Jewish mother that raised me, who happens to come out of a family out of the olive business. I needed that DNA, but I can tell you for sure, no offense to my dad, but the father that raised me, Ray Landry, I needed the discipline of a master marine sergeant. And those of you that knew me when I was younger will know maybe two sergeants. <laughs> but I needed that discipline in my structure to be where I'm at today. And if I did not have the father that raised me and the dad that, that where the seed came from, I would not be the same person. I needed both, and God knew that. God knew that. And God knew that with Joshua, he knew that, that when he heard the report of the land and he came in and he said, he didn't say God was well able. If you go into the text in Numbers, he said, he was 20 years old and he said, I want you to know that we are well able to take this land. But nobody else believed it. And it would take the death of his father, spiritual father Moses, and all the other relationships he had. And I'm sure at 60 years old, he, he was sitting there going, are we finally going in? And God renewed their strengths, he and Caleb, and they said things like, give me this mountain. Where we are right now, this Passover... Everyone in this Passover that's over 50 years old, you need to be saying, give me this mountain. You need to drink those four cups and you need to make proclamation and you need to say, Lord, redeem the time. I thought we were going in at 20 years old to take this. I didn't know we were going in at 60. Give me this mountain. We always must go through a season of slavery, wilderness, and freedom before we can even be trusted with the power of promise. In Joshua 1.10, Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the camp, and that's what we're doing now. I am passing through the camp, and I'm commanding the people saying, prepare your provisions for yourself. For within three days we will cross over the Jordan and go in to possess the land which the Lord God has given you to possess. But here's the key word, prepare provision for yourself. What is it that you're going to need in order to answer the call in the next ten years? See, one of the problems is, is we have become emotionally paralyzed over the last eight years as Christians with so little hope for this nation, with everything that was going on, whether it was real or not, we have lost hope. And when you lose hope, you lose dreams. And when you lose dreams, you lose planning. And we've got to shake off that old curse and we have to put on the new hope that America is going to prosper once again. And I'll steal the phrase, America is going to be great again. And the question is, are you emotionally, physically, and spiritually preparing for a great America? Because to this point, God's people have been provided for and have survived totally by the Lord's hands. For the most part, the church has gone from really uh, almost being a victim. And it's like at this election, the church said enough is enough. And they got out and participated and they voted and they made their voice heard. And God used it to save this nation from total destruction. But now God is developing his people. 
to get rid of the entitlement mentality and the poverty mentality to move into a prosperity mentality and an inheritance mentality and he is shaking it off. He is cutting it off and he's saying, I am causing the mature remnant, narrow is the way, pressured is the gate and few that find it. Those that find it will be mature enough to say, I can be a spirit-filled, tongue-talking Signs and wonder walking Christian that is actually responsible and usable in the kingdom of God. You don't have to be some kind of spiritual lunatic because you're spirit filled. You can be on the boards of large corporations. You can be scientists, lawyers and doctors. <coughs> and, and you can be leaders even as politicians. Because the world has labeled us if you're spirit filled you're some kind of second class you know, snake handler. I hate snakes. I hate snakes more than all of you. If a snake comes to my house, I call Dale and he kills him. I don't like him. But I want to say this to you, the man is over. Can I say this? The excuses are over. The remnant that is going to possess the land that God has for them is either going to grow up or miss it. Because there's been a 40-year purging that Joshua had, and now there's been a 40-year purging in the, in the church with the last 40 years with this word that Bob Jones spoke. I don't have time to back into it. So we are at a place where we have to be sober and move forward. And we have to take our walk with the Lord serious. This story is about an intersection of unity that links Joshua with Moses, who was given the original command. Moses was given the original command in Deuteronomy 31, 8 through 20, and it says this. Then I command you at that time, saying, The Lord your God has given you the land to possess. All you men of valor shall cross over armed before your brethren, the children of Israel. In verse 19, he says, and the men will go over first and the wives and the little ones and the livestock will wait until the Lord has given you rest from your brethren and the hearts of the father are turned to the children. That's why spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers those who are mature in the Lord, he is calling you now, rise up and let's cross over because we are in a Malachi 4-6 moment where the hearts of the fathers are being turned to the children and the children and the wives and the livestock, those who are not ready, can I translate, the immature, the, the smaller Christians, the ones that haven't been prepared for 40 years and 20 years, they are to wait on this side and those who have the faith and the experience of alignment and possession spiritual warfare that know the word and the word knows them are to go in and do great exploits not dragging your whole family and all your friends in this is an assignment from God to go in and take the land not bringing back Facebook live on it and showing them well we took this and we took that no by taking the land and walking the land and manifesting the leader Leadership, and there'll be a time when you can go to Facebook Live, but at this time, we are to go out and possess the high places. And this Passover, that's what it's all about. The Father's heart of love and responsibility releases strength to create stability, and God is not transferring wealth to the unstable. Because more money will just make them more unstable. So in Joshua chapter 1 verse 2, I'm going to back up and it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Can I say it this way to you? The second day is dead. It's over. 
It technically right now is on life support. So you can call Rabbi a liar and you can go and still see it. But I'm telling you, it is operating off earthly money. And it will soon run out. And the Lord isn't going to replenish it. Remember I said this two years from now when major ministries are bankrupt and are off television. Remember I said it. Because what happened is God asked them to surrender the ministry to them to take it into becoming, instead of a milk marn, to be at a butcher shop serving prime kosher beef from the word. And they said no. Because they worship the crowd and the money more than God. This is going to happen. I'm not making it happen. I'm just warning you because if you're part of a milk barn, when it goes to the bottom of the sea, don't say, I didn't warn you. I'm warning you. And the word says, if a watchman sees a sword coming upon the land and he does not warn the people, the blood is on his hands. The blood's not on my hands. I'm on tape. I'm telling you, the United States does not understand. They have an apostolic Cyrus who is, has tenacity and he will not quit until he gets the vision that he wants accomplished from God in this, in this hour, whether you like him or his hair or his New York accent. It don't really matter about all that stuff. God chose him and he's going to save this nation for Israel's sake. And that's why the left is completely freaking out because they are controlled by the devil. Not that we don't have devils on the right. I'll go on the record. They're on the right, left, center, up and above and everywhere. But I'm just telling you the reason the left is so panicking is because the spirits that are there, these ancient spirits, have not seen the angelic host of Zion camped out in Washington, D.C., There's a new sheriff in town. But I want, I, want, I want to tell you this. Moses is dead. And, you, and you've got to get that deep down in your spirit because otherwise, well, I'll try this one new man. I'll try this walking supernaturally. I'll try like bringing my finance into, I'll, I'll just try it for a year. And then if it doesn't work, then, you know, I'm going to go back. You can go back, but you're going to a funeral home because what you believed in is dead. So this is one of these things where you're having to come into the fact Moses is dead, but... Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, this Passover, you and all this people to a land which I will give them, the children of Israel, and every place that your, the sole of your foot will tread upon, I said to Moses, what he is saying, I had with Moses, I have with you. And I'm saying this to you, the land covenant, the healing covenant, the prosperity covenant, the miracle covenant that God had with Jesus, he's got it with you. And it's time that you walk as you walk with the one you're in covenant with, Jesus. So God speaks to Joshua and he speaks to us tonight and he says, in Joshua 1.6, he says, Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to your fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you to do, not to turn to the right hand or the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. It's time to do it God's way. God is looking for CEOs, CFOs, COOs. He is looking for people that presidents and prime ministers of countries and saying, will you follow my instruction? So that I can do a demonstration to make you a witness. And the question would be, what do I do tonight? 
If I'm preparing for this Passover and I've never been to one before, what do I do? And my answer is obey the Holy Spirit. But I will tell you this, not just to Passover, but in this next few weeks, you need to make your devotion and your study primary. Because when God was speaking through uh, to Joshua, he said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Why? For the renewing of the mind by the washing of the word. That you may have observed to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. You need to be concerned more about who you know and what you know in him, the Lord, than who you know in the world. Because the more you know about who you know God is going to determine the level of success God can uh, uh, give you and the responsibility. And Joshua 1.18, he says, Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you commanded him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Why is he telling them this? Because the Lord was warning them that rebellion will end up. You may have victory at Jericho, but you'll go to little Ai and lose because they didn't listen. And they didn't listen. And they lost. And they lost lives. In your organizations, not just churches, in your businesses, you should have zero tolerance for Jezebel and zero tolerance for rebellion because what it will do is it's easier to remove it now and to have it blow up and kill a bunch of people later. In Joshua 3, 2, So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from the place and go after it. Yet there will be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubics by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you may go, for you have not passed this way before. All of us have to soberly say, we have not passed this way before. In fact, let's just say it. Say, neighbor, neighbor. We, have passed we have not passed this way, before. this way before. Now, what is God telling us here? And this is a problem. We have to honor God when God moves, not when we want to move. We have to honor the leadership God chooses, not the ones we choose. And we need to know that when God chooses, he knows the heart better. Because what happens is we say, oh, well, maybe we should think that person should be on the worship team because they sing better and they have more musical talent and they may have it, but they don't have the purity of heart to bring the glory into the atmosphere. So the Lord will raise up somebody with less talent and ability over someone that has talent and ability because the one with talent and ability has arrogance and is fighting for position and is touching the glory. And if you let that on the platform, then you lose the whole room. But most le uh, leaders aren't strong enough to say, I need you to sit down for a little while. You're contaminating the atmosphere. Now, I don't have an issue with that. Because we've worked 16 years to get this atmosphere like this. And I made a decree to every child in this house, this would be a safe place to worship. So what happens here is, if you're going to walk into the promised land, you have to walk in at the place that the Lord chose. Maybe you weren't one of the Levites to, to carry the ark. Maybe you were not called to blow the shofars when they go across. I don't know what the thing is, but, and maybe you say, you know what, I'd like to get in first, maybe there's some benefit. So you cut in line and you get closer than 2,000 cubics. Well, if you do, then you lose everything that you thought you wanted. And the word is, pride comes just before the fall. 
And, and in, in this season, you're going to have to be excited when people are financially blessed, healed, and promoted before you. If, you. if you still have issues in your heart that you can't rejoice because somebody else is being promoted, you're in trouble. You need to get to a place because we are all connected, joint upon joint, the joint supplies. And one of the things that's getting ready to happen in the body, and it's going to be very, very painful, and it's in Joshua chapter 4, verse 4, and Joshua called the 12 men whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. You're going to see over the next two years new apostolic leadership raised over America, and it's nobody that you know. Not one TV guy. Not one book guy. It's going to be 12 hidden guys and maybe a guys and gals, I don't know. But it's going to be 12 leaders that have been prepared in the wilderness and God's going to surround them around Trump after he gets disgusted with the lack of speed in which the ones that are there move. Because they're moving off a old, Hellenized, old wineskin. And Trump is moving in a Hebraic, new wineskin. And he's already getting impatient. He's like Nehemiah. I've got a job to do. I'm going to build a wall. And I don't need you to be asking me stupid questions like who's going to pay for it. He doesn't need Sad Ballot and CNN and MSNBC and Tobiah <laughs> criticizing him because he won't stop to go and have a meeting with him. The reason he won't do it is any smart, smart businessman knows don't invest time with anybody that's speaking against your vision. It's not the 20 minutes or a half an hour you have with them. It's the next three days having to get that stupid voice that says you can't do it out of your head. I don't want to hear that I can't do it. Even if I can't do it, I don't want to hear it. I don't need someone to bring me to be balanced. If I'm walking in the supernatural, I got to believe what God said. Amen. I don't need Sanballat and Tobias says, now wait a minute. No, your agenda is you want to control the gates. And if I rebuild them too fast, you won't be able to raise up enough demonic leadership to take them. Oh, why don't you tell it like it is? Yeah, this isn't the first rodeo. So you're going to see 12, thus saith the Lord, 12 leaders who are pure of heart that have God's kingdom first, love America and love Israel, and they are going to become those advisors in the gate, and they are going to usher in, and they will come into not tribes, but they will move into every strategic spot from the EPA down to the, the forestry, down, all, of, all the gates that need to be possessed... They're going to be possessed by holy, sold out men and women who cannot be bought because they've been to the cross for real. And they'll say, I don't care how much money or I don't care what you say, I, gotta, I have to do what he wants. If he did that, I have to do this. And they're coming. No offense, I have friends that are in that circle right now, but forgive me, I see a different paradigm. In Joshua chapter 5 verse 2, they're getting ready to have the first Passover since 40 years. Think about it. Why did Moses request from Pharaoh what did he say let my people go that they may worship he was the whole deliverance thing out of Egypt was to be able to restore the the worship culture to restore the people communicating to God and so what do they do they get out in the wilderness no Passover 
And the other problem is no circumcision. Could it be because they didn't circumcise their children that they died in the wilderness? Circumcision, I'm going to read the scripture first, Joshua 5.2. And at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make a flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. Well, most of these children had never been circumcised because they quit circumcising. Circumcision began as, began as a sign of covenant between God and Abraham, Genesis 17. Its practice, however, had been suspended for 40 years, most likely as another sign of, listen, apathy and disobedience to the law. Apathy and disobedience to the law. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why would you put that baby boy through all that pain? In Colossians 2.11 it says, In him, in Messiah, you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by the putting off of the body, the sin of the flesh by the circumcision in Messiah. And we're not having regular immersions at House of David this year. That's why you haven't seen them on the calendar. And the reason is, is I'm waiting for a download from the Lord to say, what is the real serious intent of an immersion? And I don't want to tag it on to, and come to the Passover. And if you come now, there's an immersion. <sighs> but wait, there's more. You sign up now, you'll get a free to leave. <laughs> we need to have the seriousness of an immersion. Because the whole reason of the covenant of circumcision was to the shedding of the blood at the place of the seed so that it would roll away the reproach of the garden. And the reason Christians are immersed, baptized, the reason the immersion is because we need our hearts circumcised by the water so that when we speak, we're speaking out of heaven and not out of the garden. So many different issues about Passover. I can't believe it's $58. I can't believe this. I can't. All this church mentality and entitlement. This is the Passover of the Lord. Did you not read Genesis? Let no uncircumcised join you at the table. Back in the day when this was the law, you had to be circumcised if you were a non-Jew in order to come to the table. I mean, we wash hands out in the vestibule here. Can you imagine having another building set up? Bob... That would be interesting. I made fun of my walk. It'd be funny to see that walk coming in. Are you hearing me? I'm speaking to you in the spirit. We don't understand that in Psalms 23, when the Lord says, and I prepare a table for you in the midst of my enemies, I will anoint your head with oil, that Passover is the promotion table of Psalm 23. This is his table. And by the time we do it in the level of excellence that we do it and take care of all the things, we about break even. Because we do it right. And it's beautiful and it's glorious. And we give the Lord the best we have because that's what he said House of David is all about. 
If you're not called to that, that's fine. But as for this house, we are to serve the nations. We are an embassy. And the nations who are to come are to come and have that experience of God's glory at his table. Understanding that you're coming out of a wilderness. You are being anointed at a table. And you are being set into your promised land. Joshua 5.8 So it was when they had finished circumcising all the people that they stayed in their place in the camp till they were healed. Why was this? They were getting ready to march around a city and start the process of fulfilling every promise that you see in Israel. We just came from Israel. You saw a water treatment plant. You saw a large army base in the desert. You, 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 you saw the Jerusalem Museum. We went into the Jerusalem Museum and they moved the actual Dead Sea Scrolls and they rotate them around. And House of David, in this season, biblical year 5777, we go into the biblical museum and what scriptures do they have on display? Isaiah 45, the anointing of Cyrus. And what was the other one? Isaiah 60. Arise and shine. For your light has come. And the Gentiles shall come to your light. So shake him. Christy and I about had a meltdown going in there. Because they rotate them out. They had Isaiah 45 and Isaiah 60 in the museum. We had House of David people coming up, tears in their eyes. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> yes, we saw it. No accident. So it was when they finished circumcising all the people, they stayed in the camp to be healed. Why? So that when they would march, they would shut up. You're not getting it. Circumcision will take the rebellion out. They were glad to have somebody else blowing the shofar. They were just walking. My gosh. If they could have talked, they wouldn't have been talking about good stuff. I know how Jews are. The pain I have is so bad, I'm going to die. I died and resurrected back there. No, you didn't. No, my, my pain's going down both legs, up my arm. I can feel the pain in the hair, end of my hair. No, you can't. I'm new age. I, I, have, I have a zone around. My zone is in pain. I'm experiencing, this is Monday, I'm experiencing Thursday's pain. Right now, it's worse than you. So that's why he said, shut up and march. Verse 9, then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt for you. Therefore, the name of this place is Gilgal to this day. Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal. They kept Passover on the 14th day of the month. So isn't it interesting that they cross over and the first thing they do is they reconcile with God's instruction. Circumcision and Passover. That's why they took Jericho. If you'll do it God's way, God will bring the walls down. See, and it's good because the manna was getting ready to cease. Verse 11, and they ate the produce of the land on that day after the Passover, unleavened bread and the parched grain on the very same day. Verse 12, then the manna ceased. How many need new provision? If you need new provision and increased provision, then what happens is you have to divorce the manna. Quit dreaming it, thinking about it, speaking about it. Whatever that manna is for you, you've got to divorce it, circumcise your heart, sanctify it at the Passover, get the leaven out, 
and be ready to walk around your promise seven times and then the new provision will come. And you have an opportunity on April the 10th to do that right here. But they ate the food of the land of Cana that year. Isn't that amazing? They had been eating manna for 40 years. Can you imagine the strength that went into their, to their bodies by having good produce and good food? I mean, there not only was their strength renewed by God, but it was physically renewed just by having the increase of the nourishment of the new diet. God wants to give you an increase of the nourishment of the word of God to where you don't just cherry pick out of this book whatever you need, stand on that. Haven't you been standing on the same 20 scriptures for 20 years long enough? Isn't it time to kind of let God get into your business and actually change some of that thinking that is contrary to God's most excellent and best? Why are you avoiding difficult things in the word? Well, I'm not smart enough. No, you are smart enough. You are smart. God made you smart. Now I'm going to ask for the worship team to come back up, if you would, please. What happened when the manna ceased? The entitlement ceased? The responsibility was birthed? Ownership began? And they entered into a third day. I'm going to prophesy this word to you. If you want your children to desire the meat of the word, then you need to live off the meat of the word yourself. If you don't live off it, if you don't live off it, they won't live off it. If you want your children, when you send them off to college and all those new age Hellenized professors there start preaching that garbage that they preach and you want them to be able to get a degree but to be able to not be transformed by it, then they need to have a strong foundation. They need to know how to be able to go through without picking up that way. Joseph did it. Joseph controlled Egypt, but he wasn't a part of Egypt. And it started out the day he first met his boss, the CEO of Egypt, Pharaoh, and in front of all those, all those priests and all of the government officials in Egypt, Joseph comes and he refuses to bow to him. And you can hear everybody going, man, we should kill him. He refused to bow. But when you're carrying the goods, how do they kill him? He was the one with the answer to the dream. You're not getting this. When you're carrying the answer to the dream, can I say this? When you're carrying the provision of the water, when you're carrying the provision of the medicine, when you're carrying the provision of the food, when you're carrying the provision of the money, People don't need to like you. They just need to need you. What's this like about? So oversold. What are we in third grade? I like you. Pass them a note. God is doing something great. God is giving us a window of time to prepare our hearts for Passover. I wouldn't miss this Passover for anything. Pastor Tim, I was praying about honor today. The reason Jesus had to be baptized by John the Baptist was 
he didn't have to go in the water. He had to take his temple and go down and honor the 12 stones that were at this crossing at Gilgal. Jesus was higher than all the 12 leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel. But yet, he went down and blessed them and honored those 12 stones at Gilgal, the same spot. And when he raised up, the order of Melchizedek came forward. Which is your priestly order. And that's why the Lord came down and the dove came down and said, this is now my son. This is my son who I'm well pleased. But he didn't do it till he honored the past. The reason Joshua prospered, Joshua refused to dishonor Moses. I refuse to dishonor the heritage of the church over the last 2,000 years. But I'm not going to be held back from pioneering, ushering in the second coming of Messiah. Because we don't have time. We need the spirit of the two spies that say we are well able. We need to be sold out because God wants to use you in a way and if you only knew how large you would just humble yourself and rejoice. I'm going to ask if you would stand. And I just want you to bow your heads. And we're going to have an altar call. And I only want you to come down if you feel led of the Lord. And if you're watching online, I want you to move. To, I just want you to do something just so that your physical body knows. That's why bending the knee is so important because what it does is it tells your soul, no, you're not in control. I'm getting off my feet. I could run. I could walk. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to walk. I'm kneeling. And the reason I'm kneeling is because I'm saying he is out of nine. How many of you feel like Joshua? You're born in slavery. You were told all these stories. You heard all these great stories of how there will be a day when God will send a deliverer. And just like at the time of return of of Christ, everyone in Goshen would talk about how this great warrior, this great Jewish warrior was going to come, save all the Jews from slavery, kill all the Egyptians. And they would all go singing and dancing for two or three days and go into the promised land and everything would be great. And at 20 years old, he left and he went in the wilderness. And within just a few weeks, the people weren't thankful. They built a golden calf. The earth opened up, swallowed a bunch of them. I mean, it was like, man, is, is this what we... What, what happened to the 
marching band. And where's the Jewish Superman that was supposed to come and save us? And then over 40 years, you watch everyone you know and love and respect die. Everyone that told you that they knew how it worked died, including Moses. And now you're so close to the promise. It's biblical year 5777. And you're sitting there and you're going, my gosh, everybody I plan to depend on is either thinks I'm crazy or is dead. Every counselor, every comforter, every friend, every mentor, for the most part, they're all gone. And now I've got God coming down to little old me saying, now listen to me. I was with Moses, I am with you. And I'm sure in his head he was saying, yeah, I believe that 20 years ago when we saw, went in with the spies. And I'm sure he probably has in his head, you know what, I really can't take any more disappointment. I'm 60 years old, I'm not sure I really want to jump into this. Yeah, I kind of got used to manna. I could stay on this side of the Jordan with the half-tribe of Manasseh, kind of mind my own business. It's fertile, not too far from the Sea of Galilee, take vacations, go a little jet skiing. But the Lord said, I called you, Joshua. Out of all your family members, I called you. You thought it was going to be your brother. You thought it'd be your sister. Thought it'd be this one or that one. They were faster, smarter, better looking, whatever. All the things we come up with that don't mean anything. And now the Lord has got you in this open heaven. And he said, no, I'm talking to you, Joshua. He's saying to you right now, what's your excuse? He said, I started out the, the word with this tonight, that the steps of a good and righteous man, if you're born again in spirit filled, God puts you here. And he's saying to you, I don't want you looking to the right or the left. I don't want you to be codependent on anybody to make this happen. I want him to bless you. Well, I'll just do this if someone writes me a big check. No, you won't. If you won't do it without the big check, you won't do it with the big check. He's calling you right now. Where are you, Joshua? He's calling into the airways right now. Where are you, Joshua? For the master has need of you. Joshua, son of Jephuni, you who are of a different spirit, I need you now. I know you're 60 plus years old. I know all the experienced leadership has died. And you got a bunch of young, uncircumcised people. They don't even know anything about my ways. And the Lord is saying to you, Will you raise them up? Will you teach them my way? Will you lead them out of the wilderness into the promise? He's speaking to you tonight. He says, this Passover is for you. He says, all of you have run to and fro, waiting on somebody at a big pulpit, some famous Christian to do this, 
And he said, no, it's going to be you. I can see you, the wheels turning. You thought for sure it was going to be Benny Hinn. Brother Hagen. Teal Osborne. Oral Roberts. Tia Lowry. To know it's you. He says, listen, I've gone out to the highways and hedges. And they wouldn't come. He said, but you came. You're here right now. And he's just asking you, are you going to say yes? He's asking for it all. He says, I know you know me as Savior, but will you know me as Adonai, the Lord? So I'm going to open this altar. And this is between you and the Lord. I'd recommend you get out of your seat. And the reason is, you need to let your feet and your soul know that there was a night when you said, I don't care what anybody in the room sees it. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm going forward. And all I know is that if I was Joshua... It would terrify me, and I'm, I'm a little terrified right now, but if you chose me, Lord, I'm going to say yes. And you're going to remove the fear because your word says your perfect love casts out all fear.
scripture says when we're in this state, ask, what is it that you need? You need to out loud, in private, you need to ask. Lord, I need more faith. I need more character. Lord, I, I, need, I need to be debt free. Lord, I need to have peace in my home. Lord, I need my family to be in one accord. Whatever it is. Lord, I, I need to have clear purpose. Lord, I, I need that healing in my body. Lord, I, I, I need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I need to be free from the tormentors that say I can't answer it. I need to be free from this doubt and unbelief that's, that has attacked my mind, that has said that uh, because of things I've done that I'm disqualified. I need to have reality <laughs> of the expungement of sin because of the sacrifice of the cross. Whatever it is, you just need to be at peace. Some of you may say, oh, Lord, I just need to get a good night's sleep. Some of you may say, I just need to be a friend. Say, Lord, some of you may say, I just need to be able to understand God. I didn't understand anything that was said here tonight or was online. I need to understand God. I know this is God, but I need to understand it. Help me, Lord. Just ask. says unto you that which man rejected I have elected and I remove all rejection from you this hour says the Lord and I release confidence that only can come from me says the Lord for I send a fire from heaven to consume all feelings of lack of self-worth. I cleanse you from doubt. I cleanse you from unbelief. I cleanse you from the damaging words of what man has spoken over all of your life. And I start to speak my word. The Lord says, if you'll consume my word, I will consume you. He says, for it's a new day. He says, I have not opened the doors. I have removed the hinges off the gates. The gates cannot be hung again. He says to you, go through, go through the gates. Prepare the way for my people. For there are many that are called like Daniels and many are called like John the Baptist. He says, I'm releasing the witty inventions. 
He says, make peace at the journey that you've been through. Quit looking at the laugh and look at my provision. The Lord says to you tonight, look at where you are. He says, you didn't bring yourself here. I brought you here. For this Passover shall be like no other. And what I'm going to do to reverse the curse in this country was birthed here on this spot. And I will reverse it through you first. For I will reconcile all the harm that was done by the breaking of the covenant with my First Nations people. For I have heard their cry and I will answer. And they will no longer suffer and feel rejected by me, says the Lord. For I will pour out my abundance and my hunger on them first. And I am awakening the sleeping giant in the land. And they shall be blessed. And they will move into their land authority just as Israel has moved into their land authority. And my remnant shall rise up and they shall be at the top of every field that is represented here. And you will be a shining light of health and prosperity, love and humility from the smallest job to the highest in this house. For you will lead many to the Lord, says the Lord. Each one of you will have a fresh anointing for saying yes tonight to the spirit of evangelism. And everywhere you go, people will say, what is it that you have? I want it. And you will lead more to the Lord this year than you have in your whole life. Many of you will lead hundreds of people to the Lord. The Lord says, I've reversed the curse off your finances. You shall no longer have lack, but you shall have great favor. And you will have abundance to be able to give and to be able to participate. And when the Lord speaks to you to go to a nation, you won't be looking to go fund me. You'll be looking to, Lord, you have funded me. All entitlement and poverty is cut off your life, says the Lord tonight. For I have released fresh mantles of Joshua, fresh mantles of Caleb. And you shall go in the land and you will not see the giants. And the Lord says, I have anointed you this night to make you well able. Leave the past behind. Go forward in the future. For on April the 10th, 5777, when you take that last cup of praise... You will go out in an abundance and the world will shake and it will never be the same again, says the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hug a couple people's necks because these are the ones the Lord brought around you. And at this time, we're not going to do it formally, but... If you want to honor the Lord with your tithes and your offerings. If the ushers, I know it's a little awkward, but if the ushers, if you need an envelope, they'll hold their hand up if you can come get it. I'm going to have the worship team go back into worship. Just bring your offering down. God bless you. We speak a blessing over the offerings. God bless you online. Thank you for giving online. We need your help. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for the expansion. Shabbat Shalom. In the scripture, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord shines over you. For look, darkness covers the earth, and total darkness the peoples. But the Lord will shine over you, and His glory will appear over you. Isn't it an awesome opportunity to think about that the glory of God is ours? Every time I come into the house of David and I hear, Rabbi, I am moved and touched by what is shared. You have an opportunity to have that same glory by becoming a part of God's forever family. Being a part of House of David means that you're planting a seed into the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're blessing the children of Israel. You're touching people around the world. And it's, it's a connecting point that you have with 
our family to yours, and we are becoming one. Would you become one today? Would you be willing to plant a seed in this ministry? We believe that you'll be blessed. We believe that God will touch your life and your life can be changed forever. It will be transformed as you become a part of our online giving, as you become a part of our online worshiping. You are a participant with us and you will see the glory of God. Thank you for joining us today and we are praying for you. Continue to pray for us and shalom.